Hello, wild people. If you're planning to eat during your Pacific Crest Trail adventure, then you'll want to watch this video. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to develop a stressless resupply strategy for the Pacific Crest Trail. Thank you for tuning in. Today, I'm going to share with you some of the best places to shop along the Pacific Crest Trail and the best places to send resupply packages. And I'll also talk about a few things in between. All the information on resupplying a long distance backpacking trip comes from my experience backpacking 2,620 miles or all but the last 30 miles of the PCT in 2022 and 2023. And if you stay tuned, I'll explain how you can receive a free copy of my resupply guide that I'm gonna share with you today. Please subscribe to this channel and hit that like button. It'll help out a lot. When resupplying your trip, you basically have two options. One is to send resupply boxes, and I recommend the USPS flat rate boxes to various points along the trail. Or two, you can take on the role of hunter-gatherer and resupply in the towns or, or using hiker boxes along the way. Basically, it's a choice between serendipity versus security. Most of us blend both strategies into our hike. So the first thing is you need to be aware of the pros and cons of sending resupply boxes to yourself along the trail. The pros of using resupply boxes. One, you can now buy food in bulk, which saves you a lot of money from high prices you might encounter along the way in the smaller trail towns. On average, you can pack five days of resupply food in a box, although I've seen some creative folks pack even more. Two, you don't have to worry so much about food on the trail because you've taken care of it ahead of time. Three, if you have special dietary needs or suffer from allergies, resupply boxes might be the best way to help you accommodate these special needs, and it will reduce your stress. Four, once you've paid for the cost in your resupply boxes and the shipping, it should be easier to manage your costs and finances along the way because you'll have eliminated one of the biggest costs you'll have on the trail. And finally, number five, the good thing about resupply boxes is the post office will usually let you bump your resupply box or forward it to another post office along the trail so long as you don't open it. And they shouldn't take longer than five days to reach your destination once you mail them. Okay, there are also some disadvantages of using resupply boxes. First, you might pack too much or too little food in your resupply boxes. This could wind up costing you either way. Although the food you dump into a hiker box will make you a hero and a legend on the trail. A second disadvantage is your tastes will probably change so that beef stroganoff or dehydrated potatoes that you enjoyed in March might make your taste buds gag a little in July. I didn't randomly select those two foods, by the way. I can't look at either one of those two foods to this day. Thirdly, you are at the mercy of sometimes quirky post office store hours where you'll pick up your resupply box. For example, if you wind up in one of your resupply towns during a weekend, there's a good chance you won't be able to pick up your resupply box until the following week. Fourth, there's the expense. To ship a large USPS flat rate box costs about $23. And some stores you might send your boxes to along the trail might charge you a pickup fee, which can vary from $5 to $10 a box. I've seen one place even charge $15 a box. I'm not a believer in UPS boxes because in my experience they cost more and secondly, you sometimes have to figure out which entity in town accepts them because the U.S. Postal Service generally does not accept UPS. 
Okay, just like with resupply boxes, there's also some advantages and disadvantages of shopping locally. A major advantage of shopping as you hike is you can adapt to the changes in your tastes along the way, and you don't have to deal with pesky resupply boxes. However, you'll probably encounter high prices, and sometimes those prices will make you wince. You also have to deal with quirky store hours, and sometimes stores will run out of what you need, especially if you're traveling with the herd. So most of us use some form of a blended strategy on resupply boxes. And in this episode, I'd like to share with you how I, as an older hiker, but yet somebody who's very motivated, would approach a hike through the California section of the PCT. Then next week, I'll talk about Oregon and Washington and the art of packing a resupply box. In the description, you'll find details for how to contact me so I can send you a PDF copy of the resupply guide I'll be showing. The only thing I ask again is that you subscribe to this channel, like, and maybe share the video. I use two sources to plan my resupply strategy. A list of trail towns along the way and their mile number, which I have on my resupply guide, and then I use my Far Out app, which gives me real-time information on available stores, post office hours, etc. For example, Julian is located at mile 77 on the PCT. If I look up information about Julian on the Far Out app and search through the comments, I would see there are some good hiker reviews of Mom's Pies, Two Foot Outfitters, and the Corner Market. I won't look at these reviews as gospel, but if I read two to three good reviews, I'll use that information to help make my decision on where to shop. Your resupply strategy should also be adaptable. It shouldn't be so rigid that it can't adjust to potential problems you might encounter along the way such as trail closures, injuries, fires, weather emergencies, steep climbs that might slow down your pace. There is really no such thing as a textbook through hike. At the start of a backpack trip, I usually carry an extra day's worth of food for every three days on the trail while I'm trying to dial in how much fuel my body needs. Once I get into the zone, I try to carry about one day of extra food for most of the trail, with the exception of the Sierra section, where I, where I again carry an extra two days of food. Climbing and descending passes each and every day makes you very, very hungry. As I mentioned earlier, I created a list of trail towns and their mile marks along the way. These are towns where you can either stop at a store for resupply or pick up a package you send earlier. Next, you need to estimate how many miles a day you plan to cover at the start of your trip and throughout your trip as you get stronger. These projections will vary based on terrain, trail conditions, for instance, blowdowns, weather conditions, closures, injuries, how long your water carries will be. It's better to be a little conservative in your estimate about how many miles you can cover in a day or a week. Remember, about 30% of hikers wind up quitting before the end of the first 300 miles, primarily due to foot or leg injuries, so don't come out of the gate too hot. It's important to know thyself. As an older hiker, my strategy would be as follows. So I'm basically a long-suffering tortoise. I don't start out fast, but I usually don't quit. So I'll start my trek hiking about 10 miles a day for 10 days, then hike 12 miles a day for a week, and then boost it up to 15 miles a day for another week, and then 20 miles a day through the rest of Southern California, with a zero a week for resting. So that was my initial pace through Southern California, modest yet doable. If I hike more miles, more power to me. I can adjust my plan along the way. Phase one, for the first 100 miles, I'll need to resupply every 50 miles. 
Phase two, when I hike 12 miles a day, I'll need to resupply every 60 miles. Phase three, when I hike 15 miles a day, I'll need to resupply every 75 miles. And then phase four will be 100 miles a week through California. So now I'll need to resupply every 100 miles. I'll also trim my mile expectations once I enter the Sierra and maybe a bit in the San Jacintos if I encounter snowy conditions. And every five days or hiking or so, I'll take a zero. I think it's helpful to look at the PCT as a series of five day hikes. Basically, this means it will take me around eight to eight and a half weeks to complete the 700 mile desert section. The average time to start the Sierra section is around June 15th, so as far as I can tell, I'm doing fine just as long as I start the trail before mid-April. So in Campo, I'm gonna start out with two and a half days of food, which gives me a cushion should I start out slower than expected. My first potential mini resupply is only 20 miles away, and I should reach Lake Morena on the second day, where I'll definitely get a malt and a cheeseburger at the malt shop. On my list, I have the mileage, and when I come across towns along the way, I describe the options I have. Shop for resupply, or pick up a resupply box. Next to the town, I've listed whether there is a wide, moderate, or minimal selection of food available. So these are my subjective terms. Minimal is like a gas station or a quick rip where you can buy assorted junk food to tide you over to the next stop. You know, pork rinds and Dr. Pepper. Moderate means the store might have some dehydrated dinners and foods that cater more widely to backpackers. Tuna packets, Cheetos, some nice stale cookies and a hot dog to go and maybe some dehydrated stuff. Wide selection means a nicely stocked grocery store with pretty comprehensive resupply options. Uncle Ben's rice, pad thai, veggies, fruits, energy bars, tuna packets, the whole enchilada of thru-hiker resupply. A wide enough variety for a five to seven day resupply. It's in the places that have wide selection where you might also put together resupply boxes to send to yourself farther down the trail. So I have my list of mile projections and a list of towns along the way. So let's see my initial resupply strategy. Everything highlighted in yellow is where I will pick up a resupply box. Also, I have listed the shopping options at the towns along the way and the best places to shop where I can put together resupply boxes to send to myself farther down the trail. Places highlighted in green indicate where I might need to readjust my daily mile projections because of challenging country. As I move along down the trail, I'm also going to check um, each of my upcoming stops on the Far Out app to ensure it aligns with my plan and collect info about the stores available along the way. I'll be reading reviews and making sure there aren't any store closures unusual quirky hours, or maybe there's some terrible customer service I might want to avoid. You'll also find the addresses for the post offices or places that you can send resupply boxes to along the trail. Using the far out comments and info will allow me to adjust my strategies to the realities of the trail. Also, remember to allow the post office about five business days to get your resupply box. And generally, the post office will not hold your box for more than a month, unless it's the Aetna post office in Northern California, where they send boxes back after two weeks. I found that one out the hard way. Generally, you should address your boxes the following way. Your name, PCT hiker, care of, and the address, and maybe your expected date of arrival. Make sure you include a return address that is not a post office address. And according to one post office worker, include your cell phone on the last line of the return address because your cell number is the best way to reunite hikers with lost resupply boxes. 
and be sure to decorate your boxes in a way that will make them stand out from the hoard. I used fish stickers on my boxes. And finally, I'll mention this one other time, don't pack fuel canisters in your resupply boxes. That's a no-no. Let's put together my list of resupply towns with my estimated mileage along the way and how that will shape my resupply strategy. I'll consider sending resupply boxes to the towns highlighted in yellow. So, Julian, Warner Springs, Kennedy Meadows South, Kennedy Meadows North, Sierra City, Etna, and Siad Valley are good places to send resupply boxes. All the other towns along the way, I'll purchase what I need to continue down the trail. You'll notice that at mile 151, before I hit the San Jacintos, I'm going to do a reality check on how many miles I can hike a day based on the conditions ahead. And then at mile 702, when I hit the Sierra, I'll probably have to revise my projections and pack more food. Because, well, the Sierra and Yosemite sections can be slow and hungry country. So I hope I've helped you get a grasp of how to approach resupplying your backpacking trip. This same general approach will work with most long distance backpacking trips, including the Continental Divide Trail and the Appalachian Trail. I also plan to use this general approach for my upcoming Colorado Trail through hike. Now I've listed links in the description that will offer you other resources you can use for your planning including a resource put out by Half Mile and a link to an Excel document that will get you into the granular aspects of planning. I'd like to thank Neil for sending that my way. I've also included a link to the PCTA website. And finally, you'll find directions for how you can obtain a copy of my Quick Resupply Strategy Guide, which will be linked in the description. Next week, I'll talk about how to resupply for Oregon and Washington, and also a little bit about how to pack a resupply box. My goal with this video has been to help you get a grip on what can be an intimidating part of preparing for the PCT. But, you know, we're going to get through it together. So, happy trails, and until we meet again, live wildly, my friends.